Oh, didn't notice you there, eh? So a little beaver told me that some of you non-Canadians weren't able to get these sweet Link's Awakening Slurpee Cups from your 7-Elevens. So, with the release of the new game coming out soon, uh, I'll be giving some away. That's right, I'll be giving away six of these exclusive cups, two of each design. All you have to do to enter is follow these three easy steps. One, like this video. Two, acknowledge that this is called a Z. And finally, step three, check out the contest link in the description below. Contest ends on September 30th. Anyways, good luck, and now, on to the video! Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we take a look at the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in gaming. Here we are with, I guess, the annual Zelda Lost Bits video. I really gotta try covering these more often. This time we'll be dreaming into both Link's Awakening and its DX re-release for the Game Boy Color. Now it may not be my favorite title in the series, but there's no denying its importance as the first portable Zelda game. It's also getting a Switch release, today! So I'm super excited to give it another go with those fresh new graphics. Anyways, go grab your conch horn, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, let's shake things up this time and start off with the game's unused graphics. There are quite a few this time, so let's zip through them. All normally unseen, we got an early version of the dog food item, this unused Skullbat enemy that's believed to have been replaced by the split version of the Vire enemy, a vertically oriented piranha, and a lion head statue that kinda looks like Doge? Or am I just crazy? Then there's the back of the Gorilla, which is never seen, some text box graphics of a foot as well as the magnifying lens, this unused sprite of the frogs, a question mark block that is believed to have been replaced by the Yoshi doll, this small open chest, an unused Kirby map marker, an unseen alternate version of the swimsuit top that the mermaid loses in the Japanese version of the game, uh, uh, sorry YouTube, they're glasses. Yep, totally glasses. Please don't demonetize. And finally, we have these unused old man sprites, which were later reused in Oracle of Ages and Seasons. It's likely he was meant to appear in a similar capacity to the old man from previous Zelda games, but it's also interesting that this sprite is pretty similar to the shrouded Stalfos enemies. Next are some unused graphics that were meant to be used in the Travels of Link photograph seen in the DX version. First are these seagulls that are believed to be from this beach picture of Link and Marin. Then meant for this group shot of Marin, Terran, and Link, Unused is this sprite of half of Link's face that was probably going to be mirrored to show him being annoyed at Tarin for, uh, rooster blocking him. Then there's this what looks like some prototype sprite of Link for some other shot in which he looks weird. An alternate group shot with Link's face looking slightly different. And then there's this thing. The hat makes me think it's meant to be Link, but, uh, it certainly doesn't look like any Link I've ever seen. And lastly is this unused sparkle texture that is believed to have been used for either character's eye in this photo of Link using his five finger discount. Now I don't usually discuss regional differences between games, but Link's Awakening has a few pretty amusing sprites that were censored in the North American releases. First are these sprites of the hippo scene in the Animal Village. I think the changes here speak for themselves. The other bit that was censored for the North American version is the mermaid's swimsuit top I mentioned earlier. The mermaid's missing swimsuit top seen in the Japanese release was changed to a necklace. Okay, next up let's have a look at some of the game's normally unheard audio tracks. Some of these are again, region specific, and most can still be heard in the game by entering certain passwords in the name entry screen. But since they're not heard normally in the game, I'd still consider these unused. Anyways, first up is a remix of the title screen song that can be heard by entering in the word Zelda or Zeruda in the Japanese version. Next is an unused track that's exclusive to the Japanese version, which can be heard with the password Totakeke. <laughs> it 
If this song sounds familiar to you, it should, because it's another version of the famous Totaka's song. If you didn't know, Kazumi Totaka is a composer for a number of Nintendo games and often likes to hide this song as a secret. And get this, it actually appears unused in Link's Awakening twice. There's also this completely unused ocarina sounding version of it that can't even be accessed with any password. Then, as if exclusive Link's Awakening Slurpee Cups weren't enough, the original release of this game in both Canada as well as France had its own exclusive track. This one can be heard by entering in LOLO or LOLO as the password. In the DX version, this will just result in the same title screen remix we already heard, but the original release is where this original exclusive track can be heard. Similarly, there is also a German exclusive track. Man, this game has a lot of region exclusives. This song can be heard by entering in Moise, Moise as the password, which was apparently the last name of the German translator of the game. Now that, my friends, is a certified bop. Thankfully, it appears that a few of these hidden songs were also brought back in the new Switch remake. By entering your name as Zelda or Totakek, new remixes of the same songs that were heard in the original will play. Pretty sweet. Lastly, there are two shorter unused audio files. The first is a completely unheard jingle, and the second is an alternate version of the item jingle that is used. Link's Awakening has several areas that still contain data for a treasure chest, even though no treasure chests are present. In each case, the contents of the chests, had they been there, are known and range from 20 rupees to other items like the bow or shovel. And speaking of the treasure chests, there is also apparently some unused code that would have caused Terran to pop out of a treasure chest. Kinda weird. While we're on the topic of stuff seen in areas, there are a number of unseen hidden early layouts for various areas throughout the game. There are quite a few with several changes, so I won't go through all of them, but I'll quickly just show you guys the areas with the biggest changes. These changes include adding things like spookier trees, skulls, or adding some stairs. Link's Awakening also has a few rooms that go completely unused. For Canala Castle, first there is a corridor area between two sets of stairs. Not too interesting on its own besides the lights flickering for some reason, but also the stairs here lead outside the castle to this bush which if you normally try to enter the hole under it, leads to this segment. So maybe this corridor was initially planned to be added there as some sort of alternate entrance inside the castle or something. Next, there's also this water room that apparently was to empty out into the Canalet Castle moat. This one's pretty weird, as the enemies here are supposed to be the Canalet Knights, but after bringing up the subscreen, there's a chance the sprite will correct itself to appear as the trendy game operators from the trendy game shop. They still behave like the Knights, so it's clearly the wrong sprite that's being called here. Next are areas that are normally inaccessible in the middle of the third floor of Eagle's Tower, before causing the fourth floor to collapse down. The first inaccessible room is just a large open area with a single staircase. Oddly enough, even though these stairs appear to be going down, they will actually take you up to a room on the fourth floor. The other unused area is adjacent to the top left room on the third floor and even has the blocks visible continuing from that room. This area has come to be known as the Lost Hallway, and it's believed that it was once intended to be used to move on from the previous room. Unfortunately, the crystal switch here never makes that possible. 
Even weirder is that although this room isn't accessible in both the original and DX remake, it did actually get a slight update from the first Japanese version as we can see the tiles on the upper right section have been changed. This means despite being unused, the developers acknowledged this area and worked on it instead of just getting rid of it. So maybe they were considering adding it back in, before ultimately just keeping it unused. I'd be really interested to see if this room is still there in the new Switch remake. Up next, Link's Awakening also has a few text strings left in the game that go unused. First are what appear to be some unused area names. There's South of the Shrine, Entrance to the Animal Village, and finally Waterfall at the Shrine. In each case, these names don't appear on the map. For example, the south part of the Face Shrine is still just listed as the Face Shrine. Next is unused text for a mountain bridge, the warp holes, and finally a text string for acquiring a shovel. In Link's Awakening, the shovel is only obtainable by purchasing it from the shop, so this text is never used. But, like I mentioned earlier, there is that unused chest data that shows that the shovel may have once been planned to in fact be obtained from the treasure chest, and this string of text may be a remnant from that potential intention. Now while the shovel may not be obtainable in a treasure chest, on the flip side, there's also leftover data for several shop items that can never actually be purchased. These items are a guardian acorn, the ocarina, as well as the secret medicine. These can still be loaded into the game as shop items with the use of a GameShark code, and since this shop data doesn't include any pricing or associated text, you can pretty much just grab them all for free. And last up for this video, Link's Awakening has one of those debug modes that is so coveted in this series. Thankfully, it's a debug mode with a whole whack load of features, something I didn't expect for a Game Boy title. First and foremost, with the debug mode enabled by messing around with some of the game's byte values, a save file will overwrite any saved to slot 1, and will start you off with all of the game's items, weapons, as well as 10 hearts and 509 rupees. A pretty good way to start, if I do say so myself. The number of hearts and rupees actually exactly matches what is seen in several pre-release screenshots of the game, suggesting that this debug save file was likely used for those screenshots as well. Now this varies for each regional release, but overall, additionally, the debugging features allow the player to warp around to several areas instantly, skip right to the Windfish Awakening, black out parts of the subscreen for some reason, enable scene skipping in the ending, enable a text debugger which lets you view all of the game's text strings and it replaces Marin with its hexadecimal value, it allows you to view a complete photo gallery in the DX version, and finally, my favorite, the debug mode includes a feature that enables free movement for the player, allowing Link to walk through pretty much everything. As you can expect, this leads to some pretty adverse effects, like sprites completely glitching out, or just loading improperly, like here the moblins turned into Marin. Stay back, you foul blue-haired lasses! Also here we can see what I think is a moblin cycle through several of the instruments of the sirens, like the organ of evening calm, the thunder drum, and the wind marimba. Not gonna lie, we definitely need more evil attacking instruments in Nintendo games. This free movement mode also increases your walk speed, so it can be super useful if you want to get around fast, and it's just fun to play around with, to just explore how the game works, and to try and see or get to certain areas that you otherwise couldn't, like I did with the normally inaccessible areas. And just like we saw in the A Link to the Past episode, you can also just roam around and discover areas hidden in dungeons, like how in the top left section of Canela Castle is where this phone booth room from quite a ways away is actually located. Pretty weird. I don't know if it's the sense of freedom or what, but I love having free movement in games like these. I could honestly just sit here and explore the game like this for hours and hours. But anyways guys, that will conclude this Lost Bits video on Link's Awakening, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to slap a like down below and check out more of my Lost Bits by clicking on the card right here. 
If you want to stay even more up to date, be sure to subscribe here and swing by my Twitter and other social media things, all of which will be linked in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel even more, check out my merch at tetrabitgaming.com and consider becoming a channel member by clicking the big join button below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.